Hello and welcome to Philately Today. I'm Randall Sherman, Secretary of the Chicago Philatelic Society. And today we'll be talking about the uh, 121st edition of Chicago PEX, the 121st exhibition of the Chicago Philatelic Society, America's oldest stamp club. And with me is Al Kugel, the General Chairman of Chicago PEX 2007. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Randy. And uh, this is, and I don't know if you haven't been to a stamp show, uh, you, you know this is this is a experience. You don't have to be an expert in philately. You don't have to be uh, that interested. This is an opportunity, and particularly for you in the Chicago area, because this time, mo you know, many of you are I immigrants, sons of immigrants, grandsons of immigrants from from a variety of countries, and for many of you. This, the theme of our show will tie in to your, your ancestral homeland because it's a pan-Slavic exhibition. It's going to be featuring uh, conventions of six uh, philatelic societies spanning Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, tell us about that, Al. Well, pan-Slavic uh, covers four of our societies, the Czechoslovak, Polish, Russian, and Ukrainian philatelic societies. Those are groups that the members specialize in the stamps and postal history of those countries. We also have the closely geographically related uh, Austrian and Hungarian societies. Uh, these countries at one time uh, had a lot of Slavic inhabitants, most of whom are no longer living in their boundaries, but uh, are living in their own countries. And all six of these will have meetings of their members and it's open to the public. Several of them will have special presentations where you can come and hear an expert on a particular area within uh, that country's philately. So all of these are free. Uh, as I say, they are open to the public. And we have three days of activity uh, that everybody can participate in. Parking is free and admission is free. So it's a great time to come and learn something about the, uh, these countries as well as their stamps and their history. And the show will be held November 16th through 18th over at the Chicago, uh, at, uh, uh, in Northwest of Chicago at the Sheridan Chicago Northwest, 3400 West Euclid in Arlington Heights, Illinois. And that's just west of the uh, Arlington Park racetrack, um, maybe about 15 miles northwest of O'Hare Airport. And it's not far from the metro line so if you're taking public transit you can take the metro train to uh harlington park, park, station. park station and and, and then con and give give the uh give this uh state uh hotel a call and they have a shuttle bus and that can be done you can give you can check get the number from the uh beforehand uh any event it's it's it should be uh, it's a well it's a national level show and in fact it's probably the second largest national of the 30 plus national level shows that are held throughout the country each year. This is, this is probably second only to the to APS stamp show, which is another field by itself. But this, this uh, of the ones that are in the same city year after year after year, this is probably the biggest, right? We think so. Well, you got, <laughs> I mean, you need 160 frames. And a frame, my friends, is 16, eight and a half by 11 pages like this. So you have 16 pages of this filled with uh, philatelic material stamps or covers. That's one frame. You need about 160 frames to make it, uh, to qualify for an exhibit, uh, for you know, for an exhibition at the national level. And, and we're going to have more than 330 frames. Yeah, you have over twice that, and, 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 and you could have had more, except you don't you literally don't have the space. I'm told. Well, that's all the room we have. <laughs> so I mean, other show and. Is this unusual? I mean, most yeah. I've heard that most most of the national level shows are, have been having problems of late trying to fill their 160 frames. Well, we have a good reputation as a great place to come for a stamp show, so we get 
exhibitors and we'd get collectors and we'd get dealers coming from all over the country and a few even from overseas. We've got some exhibitors coming from Poland, for example, one of whom will give a presentation on the subject of his uh, exhibit. That's amazing. So, so I mean, I mean, we have a huge Polish community in the Chicago area. You, you know, the his, the, the philatelic history, the postal history of your homeland. You know, uh, you know, this is an opportunity to see see material, see, uh, you know, history of of, of Poland in a, in a philatelic sense that you will have ne that you may never seen before, and you may not get an opportunity for quite some time to get this material all together at one site. Plus, the related countries. Poland was part was part of uh, Russia, and part part of it was with Austria, Hungary, and they're all going to be there too. And you can and, and probably going to see material for uh, what surface Polish areas before Pol before Poland became independent after w end of World War One. And, and the same thing comes true with Czechoslovakia now, the Czech Republic and Slovakia. Uh, this is, uh, I, you'll see material there, and we have a lot of people for, uh, who, whose ancestry comes from, from that par uh, part of the world. Uh, you have uh, from the other countries, Russia, uh, Ukraine, you know, Austria, and Hungary. And, the, and this opportunity, but it isn't just limited to this, those six societies. I mean, we have, you have a number of exhibits that are, are, are of a more general nature for cover the rest of philately. Yes, we have about 100 frames that will be uh, not related directly to these subjects, including uh, American philatelic material and uh, from other countries that are not uh, in the Slavic area. So, and there, there will be youth exhibits put together by young people, mostly in their teens. Sometimes we get some that are even younger. Uh, there'll be a special room where the uh, young collectors or even people who are just interested in it can come and look at the youth exhibits. There's material, there's uh, albums, there are covers, there are stamps that are given away there free to people, the, the young people who want to collect them. And we've got people there to answer their questions, to help them with anything that they're working on. So it's a great thing for people of all ages and we really invite you to come. And if I understand correctly, there will be pro on the first day of the show, Friday, November 16th, there'll probably be about three elementary schools or at least coming into uh, the show on a field trip to uh, 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 to to you know to to uh, enjoy the exhibits to uh, learn more about philately and about the particularly you know the, how it, how it developed and and what was significant about these stamps from these various countries that will be in the exhibits from the for these uh, societies and and that will be significant because you got to understand uh, uh, that when you have convening societies holding their annual conventions at a show, national show like Chicago Pax, you're going to get the best exhibits that, that their, their members have generally. And so, so you're, going to, you're going to see some outstanding material. And I hope uh, and these kids are going to be in for a real treat. And so will you if you come to the show on, uh, between the uh, 16th and 18th of November. So, so Usually I mean, we have uh, about between 50 and 75 young people coming from the schools. The schools regard this as an educational experience, so they actually uh, let them out of class on Friday. They, they come about 10.30 and they stay till 2, and by the time the bus gets them back to their school, it's time to go home. So they really uh, have a time where they, can, they spend time uh, in the youth room, they spend time looking at the exhibits, and they spend time in the bourse where various dealers are selling stamps and albums and things. And there are, there are low-priced uh, stamps that they can buy there from the, some of the dealers. So it's not that you have to have a lot of money in order to do this. You can get a lot of stamps uh, without spending much money. Well, uh, no, because uh, I mean, a lot of the material that, uh, I mean, you, you're an expert exhibitor. I mean, uh, I mean, it should be noted that you are probably one of the more prolif most prolific uh, uh, top-notch exhibitors in the world. And although you don't exhibit competitively at this show because you're the uh, general chairman, but uh, you, you know, I know you, 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 you're, you go through dollar boxes on a routine <laughs> basis because your your forte is military postal history, and you'll find, and, and that's where you'll find material that and it, that could make a, a, a outstanding addition to your exhibit because it may be in a, a card box because it's uh, if it's you know. 
It doesn't I'll, look like much. <laughs> well, but, it, but it's significant because it, after you explain what the significance, it becomes uh, something that's worth, that's not more than just not so much. Well, so a lot, as you can imagine, a lot of military mail looks like it went through the war. And so it, it's not clean and pristine. Uh, we don't have too many where you find blood stains on them, but uh, that would be a great thing, too. Yeah. But you can, you well, can not, not for the poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> but he's gone. <laughs> yeah, well, we wouldn't want. We, we don't want to feel bad, but especially since it's you know under these circumstances. But I mean, uh, you also have the postal service will be there. The uh, uh, they'll have they'll, they have have a full service facility so that you can come by during the show all three days, including Sunday, and 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 buy all the stamps you need for, for the holiday season and anything, any mailings you're going to be doing. You're going to be planning to mail out stuff, packages and whatnot. You need odd, a whole bunch of odd rate stamps. Uh, you, 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 can, you can pick them up there. And, you, and by this time, time Chicago Picks comes out, uh, USPS is done with their stamp program for the year. So you have every, all the stamps that have come out that you may have not, your local post office may not have had, you're looking for the Star Wars, you're looking for, for the comic book carriers, whatever. They should all be there, and uh, that, which is good. Yeah, the Arlington Heights Post Office sets up a special booth, and they order in stamps from the philatelic agency. So they, have, they will have a stock available at face value. You don't have to pay any premium or anything for any of this. You buy them at their, their postal value, uh, and they'll have all the issues from this year and probably quite a few for the past several years, and you can buy all of those, uh, whatever you want. And, and they're having, and the show's theme this year is, uh, you know, which where will where will be people will be bu buying stamp cover, you know, that will the Chicago Phil Talk Society will prepare a cache stamps will get canceled and be ha selling right there, so the postal service won't have to bother. Uh, Sending those through the mail, and I believe that's called, it's uh, honoring uh, no, uh, Nobel scientists, uh, Slavic Nobel scientists, Slavic Nobel Prize winners, and and, and so uh, I believe uh, the 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 cache features uh, Marie Curie, and yeah. we have have canceled with uh, her and with uh, Pavlov and uh, the, the Corey uh, man and wife called the, Corey the from, from, from Czechoslovakia. You know, so so you get you get a nice mixture of different of the diff some of the different countries that are uh, uh, represented in, in, at the show with their uh, national societies, and and uh, so so there's an opportunity to uh, to get that uh, a little souvenir and such, but uh, people are also also there's the United Nations Postal Administration will have a booth there so they can get uh, UN uh, stamps at face. Uh, I believe. Yes, they, uh, they're they always there, and they have the latest issues from the United Nations, and you can buy those at face value also. Now, there's going to be a, a, a lot of clubs, not just the, the six societies, and let me repeat what who they are who are having their conventions. That would be the Polonius Philatelic Society, the Rossica Society of Russian Philately, the Society for Czechoslovak Philately, the Society for Hungarian Philately, the Ukrainian Philatelic and Newsmatic Society, and the Austrian Philatelic Society. I mean, they're all going to be having having their convention. And I believe, in the case of the Austrians, it's basically they're they're you know they're 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 coming back to life more or less. Yes, they've uh, they're they're a club that goes back a ways, but then they went dormant, and about three years ago they've resurrected it. And this is their first actual national meeting since they've gotten the thing uh, back on track and I mean it, 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 ta it probably takes a lot to you know I mean I should point out that you you had a national society of your own, yourself you're head, you're currently the president of the military postal history society so you you understand this you know, how, you know the difficulties of, of, of organizing and, and putting something together on a, na uh, a national society or even though in your case, you, you just simply uh, exceeded to the uh, top spot in an organization that was already moving right along. Here you're having something where they're trying to just get restarted from uh, almost from scratch. Well, you always have to organize your annual convention because we uh, hold ours in a different city every year. So we have it, the, the members who live in different parts of the country have an opportunity to actually come to the meeting uh, when it comes to their part of the country. It's, uh, so we, it's, 
Now, a lot of t now I, that's another point we want to bring up is that these ang these societies, you know, schedule their annual conventions in different cities every year, and a lot of the, we have something like thirty national shows that are, that, that that try to get these, and uh, many of them are you know struggle to get one uh, or two. Uh, uh, here, here we here Chicago Pex, uh, the Chicago Phil Talk Society is able to pick up a half dozen. Uh, what makes it, what makes that uh, possible? I mean, how how how? What's the secret to the success? Well, there are several factors. Some of some of which is luck. Uh, but uh, what we do, we have a very good reputation for putting on a good show. Uh, as I say, everything is free. The parking, the the uh, entrance fees, there aren't any. Um, it is a big show, so there's a lot of things on display. There's a lot of we have 75 dealers selling either. Uh, stamps or covers or accessories, uh, albums, whatever anybody needs. And uh, some of those dealers are brought in. Uh, you usually bring in a, a few who are specialized yeah. in the material uh, uh, subject area of of your of the convening society that are coming the, in. Two dealers who specialize in Polish material, one from Canada and one uh, from the area. So uh, they will be able to handle requests for Polish stamps. Uh, very easily because that's what they sp are specifically deal in, and we invited them in particular for this. But the main thing is it's easy to get to Chicago. Uh, almost every town has some sort of a arrangement, some airline or other transportation where it's easy to come to Chicago. It's not so easy if you're going to Omaha or um, even Milwaukee. Uh, this is this is a good place to come to. Uh, it's a very nice hotel, so if you're staying overnight. Uh, you're in a first-class uh, residence. Uh, it's easy to get there on the expressways. It's very close to the intersection of, of Highway 53 and the Northwest Expressway, Northwest Tollway, I should say. And uh, there's, so it's, it's within two miles of that intersection. So it's very simple to get there. So, so we do try to get societies. And once we got the first two of the Slavic societies, we approached the other ones, said, hey, we, we could have a pan-Slavic meeting. And they thought this was a good idea, so we ended up with four of those. And it then turned out that the Hungarians couldn't go where they had originally planned to have their convention. And they heard about this. They asked, could we come? And we said, sure, we'll, we'll fit you in. And then the Austrians also heard about it. So uh, it grew. Normally, we have two to three societies, depending on how large in a membership they are. Some societies, uh, you, you know, bring in a lot more exhibits than others, and you don't really, like last year, you were able, you only had one, the Germans, but they, they are a very large they, they, society. They have a very uh, complicated number of uh, very specialty areas within the German society. You know, the colonies, the yeah. plebiscites, the old empire, the uh, Third Reich period, the post-war. So that's almost like having a bunch of societies within one. And all of those groups had their own meetings, so as well as the general meetings. So this year we have the six. Next year we've got three. So three is, is sort of normal. And that brings in the exhibitors and uh, the, the collectors who are interested in those specialty areas. And that gives us a good crowd. And that's what attracts the dealers. Now, the top exhibit that, you know, you'll have a, a banquet on um, on Saturday night, November 17th, and the grand award winner uh, uh, er, it earns a special honor. It qualifies for the World Series of Philately, and you, you're familiar with, with, with uh, qualifying for the World Series of Philately. Tell people about that. Well, there are, as Randy said, 30, maybe 31 national level shows of which Chicago Pex is one. Uh, the winner of each of those 30 gets to compete at the stamp show, the APS national show, which is in a different city every year, and they compete against each other for the champion of champions. So that's, you go from the ones that are good enough to win their own show that they're in, then they go in and they try to be the best of the best, but only one wins. Now, yeah. I've been in that uh, champion of champions competition a number of times, they but I've never, last two years. I've never made it so to the top, and I, and I probably won't. Uh, military mail isn't as exotic as the classic uh, stamps of some particular country. In yeah, it's a little it's a little hard when when, when you realize <laughs> that two of, I think two of the last five five winners featured uh, uh, stampless uh, mail uh, addressed to uh, John Hancock in July of 1776. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's you know when you're talking about just okay, uh, uh, you know, mail from. Uh, 
Austrian sailors that were were defending the, the the Vistula River or something. I mean, I mean, you got good material, but let, let's face it, it ain't it, it ain't John, it mailed to John. None of those guys were John, named John. Not, Hancock. not even to the Emperor of Austria. Yeah, no. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but the point, is, you know, but it's still, still, of course, we we can't because. Uh, we've already, Chicago Phil Tech Society is blessed the fact that we've already got three three of our members have already qualified for the champion champions and 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 we got another uh, nine months to go in the competition before uh, to before we get to uh, the the uh, final uh, battle in Hartford Connecticut next August uh, so we want to congratulate uh, Elliot Landau Nancy Clark and. Uh, and Larry Gardner for w winning their uh, w winning grand awards already in earlier competition. Now, th th now there's a whole bunch of societies and we do need to go through just briefly. Uh, most of the meetings are going to be on Saturday the 17th. I mean, uh, explain to people why, 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 <laughs> why? I mean, I know, I mean, I understand, but the, the average yeah. viewer doesn't know it's, why. It's the most popular day because people are off from work and if they're traveling in from some other town in the state or even from out of state, uh, they will, might not get there till Saturday. So uh, we do have the biggest attendance on Saturday, and that's when the societies like to hold their meetings. So we pretty, pretty much got it scheduled up with meetings starting at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning and running through. And, and the show runs from 10, 10 to 6, so 10 to pretty 6. much almost the pretty entire time. Pretty much scheduled that whole time on Saturday. Let, let, well, now, it's 10 to 6, uh, by the way, the... Uh, Meeting times, uh, the show times on Friday and Saturday, 10 to 4 on Sunday. Although on, on Sunday, you'll, the, the exhibit area will shut down an hour early. Yeah, it should be shut down at 3 so the exhibitors can get their material down and put it back in their briefcases or whatever they're using and get to the airport if they're flying out. Uh, it was when they started cutting back on the fl late flights on Sunday uh, after 9 11. We had people having a problem of getting this all done, getting to the airport, going through the screening, and catching a plane. Well, now you don't catch anything after 7 or very few uh, places where you can fly to after 7 on Sunday. So uh, we've let them out a, a, an hour early. Seems fair. Now, on Saturday, uh, Saturday the 17th, uh, we'll, we'll go through the, the meeting list and uh, – Take notes. They'll be posted, folks. They'll have programs when you come there, and you'll you're there. But to make a note, uh, beginning at 10 a.m., we had the inaugural meeting of the Aus Austrian uh, Philatelic Society. Uh, we'll also have at 10 a.m. the annual meeting of the Polonius Society, and also you're having a, a, a meeting of the Iran Philatelic Study Circle. That uh, I get. You know, you get you get sometimes other groups are coming in even uh, even now. Yeah, they don't have to be a convening society to ask for a meeting room. And, in fact, we have more societies meeting that aren't one of the convening societies than are. So there's a lot of them. At 11 a.m., there are the meetings of the Ukraine, the Ukrainian Society's annual meeting. And the Philippine Society has a regional meeting in there. At noon, we'll have a, a special presentation by the Polonia Society, which you alluded to earlier. 1 p.m., there's the Czechoslovak Society's annual meeting, the Rosica Society's annual meeting, the, the uh, chapter meeting of the Germany Philatelic Society, Chapter 5. That's uh, the local uh, club here that, we don't, that they moved their uh, November meeting to Chicago PEX. Uh, the American Ceremony Program Society will have a regional meeting as well. Be, that deals with... Uh, uh, ceremony programs and such. 1.30, you have a special presentation from the Czechoslovak Society. At 2 p.m., you have a meeting of the Chicago Lion First Day Cover Society. That deals with first day covers and and be a very fine meeting, I'd say so, even if I wasn't the president. <laughs> at uh, 2 p.m., we also have a meeting of the Hungarian Society. And their, their annual meeting will be held at that time. And Rossica will have a special presentation at 2 p.m. These are all different rooms, folks. It, 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 it might, I mean, it'd be a little bit really chaotic if we have all, all these meetings going on at the same time in the same room. So we got about four meeting rooms that we can use, and so we switch them back and forth. Okay. At 3 p.m., we have the, what the uh, meeting of the American Association of Felt Exhibitors. And explain what that's all about. Well, the... Uh APES, as we call it, A-A-P-E is the acronym, 
uh, is a, well, you might say it's a trade union for judges and exhibitors. Uh, we uh, try to help uh, new exhibitors, give them advice as to how they can improve their exhibits. We have a critique service where they can send a photocopy of their exhibit in and it will be looked at by uh, qualified APS judges. Of which you're, you're one, by I'm the way. one. I've done some of those. And they're very interesting. You spend about 10 hours going through somebody's exhibit, writing notes on the copy and telling them, you know, you might consider doing this. Or if you if they have too many colors in their border, you say that's just de detracting from the uh, interest created by the philatelic material. They have a journal that talks about what's new and what's going on in the exhibiting world. Uh, we If we sometimes think we can we could have better rules on some of the uh, guidelines that are used for exhibiting. We will put in a campaign to have them changed, and, and a lot of those have been adopted. Uh, the, the single frame exhibits, which is a relatively new event, uh, was basically uh, brought up by the apes. But anyway, this is a meeting where members and other people who are interested in exhibiting can come and uh, comment and talk back and forth with each other and ask questions. And it, it only lasts an hour, but it's sometimes very interesting. It's for which it's, it only lasts an hour because it's followed by the philatelic <laughs> exhibit critique, where, where the judges will then explain to the, uh, those who are exhibiting uh, why they got whatever metal being gold, vermeil, silver, silver, bronze, etc. And such, and, 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 and given the fact it's twice the size of a standard show, it, it could be a little long. But fortunately, if anything like last year, most of it will go fairly smoothly because. Last year, three fourths of them got cold. <laughs> well, we attract a lot of high level exhibits yes. and they get good awards on that. We whole. also have a literature exhibit uh, uh, lib competition. And just briefly mention, and you know, th that's a separate jury, and, and they, they've been judging it because they, they get to judge that stuff early, and they'll have their critique on Sunday. And also, Sunday, there'll be meetings at 11 a.m. of the Space Unit meeting. Uh, uh, meeting. The Illinois Postal History Society will meet at uh, noon, and the Jack Knight Chicago Air Mail Society will meet at one. Again, uh, explain if you know, why people should come to Chicago PEX. Why they should come? Yeah, what, 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 why, what, what, what's, what should be expected well, there? I'd like to say if you want to see a great stamp show, uh, this is the place to come. If you want to see just a lot of interesting stamps. You don't even have to care whether they're a show. They're up there in the frames. You can spend hours just looking at how you can, how people can assemble an interesting uh, exhibit of some particular facet of collecting. And uh, we have stamps. We have covers. We have uh, covers without stamps on them from the old days when they paid cash to have it sent. Uh, and we have all sorts of uh, other things related to these. So. The fact okay. is, it's, it's, there's okay. a lot of things to see. November 16th to 18th, Sheridan, Chicago Northwest, 3400 West Euclid and Arlington Heights, Chicago Pex 2007. Al Kugel, thanks once again. It should be a great show. I'm Randall Sherman. Until next time, enjoy Philale. This has been Philale Today. Have a great day.